Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. We finally have the 2024 Ford Ranger here on our own property to put it to the test. This has been an interesting truck because it launched in Europe and Australia and in other world markets basically a year before it came here to North America. So we've had to watch everyone else enjoy it, but now we get to here on home soil. So in this video, we are gonna put a trailer behind this Ranger. We're gonna load it up with payload. We're gonna put it up on our truck rack and look underneath. And then we will tell you if this is the best mid-sized truck on the market. Let's start with the walk around. So powering our Ranger Lariat here today is this 2.3 liter inline four EcoBoost engine. That means it is turbocharged. Power output is 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10 speed automatic. Now there is gonna be the 2.7 liter V6, but that is late availability on this truck. Oh, the hood doesn't want to close. Come on, hood. Let's try again. There it is. Weird. So yeah, I was saying there is going to be uh, the turbocharged V6 available on this truck. And then if you step up to Ranger Raptor, you get that three liter. But for right now, this is the one engine you can get, this small i4. Now I mentioned this is a Lariat Ranger, which means this is top of the line. This is essentially their luxury trim. So you are getting some unique details up in the front end, a different grill, some of that bright work down below. As we roll back, you're gonna see a nice set of 18 inch wheels. And in this case, they are wrapped with Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrain tires. So nice to have something a little more aggressive than a standard street tire. Uh, body color mirror caps you're gonna see, the body color door handles, these are all Lariat things, just to add to the styling a little bit. Down below, you're getting a nice big wide step right there to help you climb up into the truck. But you know what, why don't we just take a stop right now and you can go in the comments and let me know what do you think of the styling here on the Ford Ranger? It's certainly quite a bit different than uh, the other mid-sized trucks on the market, I would say, because this is a worldwide truck. This Ranger, as you see, it is sold all across the world, and styling tastes are very different in other markets than they are in North America. So unlike this thing's biggest competitors, which are really only sold here, this has to appeal to everybody. So the styling's a little more rounded, not quite as aggressive as what you're gonna find on Shea, a Chevy Colorado. So yes, drop in the comments and let me know what you think of the look. Let's look at the business end of the truck now. First, I'll show you these new steps. Now, not quite bumper steps, just ahead, but still, it's gonna help you get up here, climb up into your truck. They're quite big too and wide, so if you have a boot on, you're not gonna have a trouble. Next up, the tailgate. It is damped, which is nice. You're getting a ruler along the edge, and then you're getting these C-clamp pockets right here, so you can actually grab onto something, say lumber or something that you're working with. You can clamp it right to your tailgate. Plus, on the edges of this tailgate, you do get bottle openers. So uh, yeah, when you're out there camping, you can crack a bottle using your tailgate. Now, looking at the bed, Ford calls this a five foot bed, but the official length spec at the floor is just a hair underneath five feet. So it's not even quite five feet long. Still, I do like the bed because it has a variety of tie downs. You're getting these rear tie downs, the center tie downs, and then the fronts. And they're actually at different heights, which is always nice too, just for tying down different things. There's also power back here in the bed. And unlike a lot of brands, which just give you a plug, you also get a 12 volt outlet back here in your bed. So you do have choices for uh, what kind of power you wanna use. Now finally, towing and payload on our two inch hitch receiver here with this truck, you can tow up to 7,500 pounds. And let's check the door jam sticker for payload. On our Lariat here today, 1,485 pounds of payload, which is a good number for a mid-sized truck, especially considering this is the top luxury trim. 
Let's look at the back seat of this Ranger now. So I start with the baby seat situation. You have two lower latch positions and three top tethers. There's one frustrating thing though. This is not a 60-40 split on your folding back. This is call it 100 if you want, but yes, the whole thing comes down at once. So if you're like me and you're trying to install one rear facing seat and one forward facing seat, well, you have to make sure you get the top tethers dealt with first before you try to put something else in here. It can be a little frustrating and it offers no kind of cargo flexibility either. Now on the flip side, the seat bottoms come up, which is really nice too. So you do have both of those things and you get some storage. You get some tools here, a little storage on the driver's side and a big storage on the passenger side. I definitely like that. I would say it's probably the most comfortable back seat in a midsize truck, period. This is a comfortable driving position for me, a big guy. Usually I push all the way back. This is pulled forward just a little bit, but look, I have enough knee room here. I'm not jammed into the seat. I stand at six foot two. My knees aren't too tall, anything like that. Headroom is close, but I do have enough. I'm not jammed up into the roof either. So yes, mid-sized trucks, they have been getting bigger. And this is the one area where you really feel it here in the Ranger is the fact that the back seat is legitimately big enough for a full-size adult. When it comes to amenities, you do get a little bit of storage back here. You're also getting a 400 watt three-prong plug plus two USB ports. The one thing you don't get in the back of this truck is any HVAC vents. They're all up there in the dash. Let's look underneath this Ranger now. So first of all, right up front, I like to point out the tow hooks and we do have some nice big exposed tow hooks right there, easy to get to. Even uh, if you are down sunk somewhere, still pretty simple to find. So next up, the bumper goes right into skid plate. There's just a little gap right there. And this is my magnet here to check it. That is a steel skid plate. It's at this point, I should point out, this is an FX4 equipped truck. So that's one of the reasons why we're getting so many skid plates underneath it. So you get your front steel, which overlaps, which is really nice with your next steel skid plate. So we're all steel up front here, which is pretty nice. Moving back, transfer case skid plate, also steel. And then finally you do get a fuel tank skid plate but that guy is just plastic, no doubt some type of composite plastic, but plastic nonetheless. Now at the back, of course, there's your solid axle and you are getting a full size spare tire back there. Now I do have to go out of my way on this one to point out, look how rusty this drive shaft is. Same with your front half shafts, front drive shaft from the T case. We look at the underside of a lot of new trucks. A lot of them have surface rust, but I'll be honest, this is the second Ford Ranger we've put up here. We did this with the Raptor as well. And it was also quite rusty. So I don't know what it is that Ford does or doesn't do that the other brands do or don't do. They just show quite a bit of surface rust when you look underneath. First test up here, folks, is the payload test. So we loaded up this truck with all 12 of my rubber mats. Those things weigh 96 pounds a piece, which brings us to a total of 1,152 pounds of rubber in the back, plus myself and cameraman Liam up here. We're probably right around that 1,400 payload mark, probably a little bit over it actually. So again, this is a good test. With most mid-sized trucks though, we can't load all the mats in the back. We usually limit it to around 10 to allow for our weight so we're not way overloading the truck. So again, I just wanna give the Ranger props for having such good payload ratings. And I remember being on the first drive where we had all the different trim levels there and it didn't matter which trim you looked at, it felt like the payload rating was always around that 1500 pound mark. So thumbs up to Ford on the payload. And then also a thumbs up on the way it feels. So first of all, we do still have leaf springs in the fat in the back. Ford didn't get fancy and go to coilovers. And uh, and when you're driving this truck empty, it's not really that stiff. But when you load it up right now, it takes all the stiffness out of it. But the beauty is it feels like there is tons of suspension left back there. So I'm actually here on this kind of broken road, a lot of little bumps and it's totally comfortable. It doesn't feel like I'm pushing through the corners. It doesn't feel like there's excess body roll. It's nowhere near the point of feeling kind of squishy and sketchy. Um, everything about it feels really controlled. So not only is the payload number good, but actually running at that payload number, you have no issues whatsoever. The only place that I really feel it 
is in the brake pedal, and that's to be expected. And again, I, I don't think I would say that it is scary or that the brakes aren't good, but you do have to dig your foot in a little bit further to find you know the necessary braking. Outside of that though, you load this truck up to the limit, and it feels quite good rolling down the road. Now there's one other thing I do want to test, which is just the power. So right up here, we'll put our foot to the floor and we will see how it accelerates. All right, here we are now. I'm at a stop sign merging onto the highway. I'm gonna put it into tow haul mode because it's not just for towing, it's for hauling as well. So that's gonna adjust the shift mapping and let's come around this corner and then go foot to the floor. And there's 100 kilometers an hour right there. That's strong acceleration. Uh, clear turbo lag, takes a few beats before you really feel the meat of the power kick in. But yeah, once it does, no complaints on the power either. And keep in mind, this is the least powerful engine option here in the Ranger. Now it doesn't sound great, most small turbo fours don't, so you know, that's one knock against it. But when it comes to actually getting up and going, yeah, that was no problem, even with a bed full of rubber. So payload definitely gets a thumbs up here in the Ranger. Let's go grab our trailer now and see what the towing feels like. Okay, folks, back in from payload now. We're gonna strip the rubber out of the back of the truck, but first, let's do a squat test. So I'm gonna measure what it is now with the weight in it. We won't move the truck, and then we'll measure again once the weight's out. Well, we come down to the center of the wheel best we can. That is 35 and 3 quarter inches. 35 and 3 quarters. Now let's strip the weight out, and uh, we will compare. Okay, weight's out of there. Let's see how much it came up. So that's basically 38 inches even, which is uh, two and a quarter inches. And in our testing, two inches of squat for a thousand pounds of payload is very typical in a truck like this. So yeah, just a hair over two inches with a hair over a thousand pounds makes total sense. And from behind the wheel, you really didn't feel that squat. And that's what these trucks are designed to do. They're designed for this to squat down like that, handle the weight, and that's exactly what the Ranger did. Time to hook up the trailer now. So let's take a look at our camera system. So there's your standard view, sort of the rear and the top down. This top down view is cool because you can zoom in on specific corners. So if you wanna just look at that corner and you get the predictive guideline for where your tire's gonna land, you can also just go to the rear end of the truck and then you get both predictive guidelines. So it's pretty neat to have those choices. Now next up, you just get the rear and your parking sensors. You can then go up here to your wide rear view or into your specific hitch view right there. And what I think is really cool is over here with this rear view, if you hit the plus, it's actually a different hitching view than the other one is. It's a little bit closer. So you actually have two different choices for how closely you wanna look at that hitch. I also like that they put the parking sensor control right here because usually when you're backing into this stuff, you want those off so it's not beeping at you. So we get in close here, and then we can go ahead and put it in hitch view. Gives us a close up, and drop the ball under the pin, just like, oh, darn it. My height wasn't adjusted correctly. Well, once I adjust it, we'll get it hooked up. But there you go, a real nice camera system here on the Ranger. All right, folks, now we're here towing in the Ranger. We're doing 5,000 pounds today. It's a good number for a mid-sized truck. And Dad decided to join us. So Dad, let's feel the power here. Come around the corner and nail it. There's nobody out here, so hang Nice, on. we can come to a stop, actually, and then and line up. Exactly. Okay. Yep, tow haul mode's on. Let's do Three, it. Three, two, one. It's okay. 
you know what, I did the power earlier with the payload in, and same thing, the, there's a lag. 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, there is. It just certainly does not sprint off the line, does it? No, it took a good, especially with the trailer, a good couple of seconds to really feel like the power was kind of coming on strong. Um, now keep in mind, this is the least powerful engine you can get in a Ranger. So with that sort of context, yeah, I still think it feels uh, half decent for towing. If you were to be towing this much weight a lot, I might recommend bumping up to the 2.7 EcoBoost just to get a little bit more of that, you know, whole shot off the line. Right. But still, overall, uh, I don't think it was too bad. Right? And, and just as a reminder, this is 5,000 pounds, and of course it's on our flat deck, so it's strictly weight. We're not dealing with uh, aerodynamics. Like a tall trailer that's going to be, you know, pushing the wind. But yeah, I think uh, it's all right. So. Um, there's power, let's talk dynamics. Again, this truck tops out at 7,500 pounds of towing, so we're close to max, but we're not quite there. And I'm feeling the same thing I felt during the payload test, which is that there's still plenty of suspension back there. It doesn't feel like we're close to the bump stops. It smooths out the ride a little bit compared to empty, because you know you get some weight on those rear leaps. And again, I don't know about you, it doesn't feel too squishy doesn't feel loose at all and those are all confidence inspiring things but that's what I feel over here what do you feel no you're absolutely right I mean you know no hand on the wheel it does not push it the front ends not high it's not light in the steering mm -hmm. so it's well balanced yeah. for what it's doing and I think it, it, it kind of ties back to a point I made earlier about the styling but you made it off camera just a minute ago which is that this is a worldwide product and in a lot of markets, there is no F-150. This is as big as it gets. So the truck has to be ready to handle, you know, a pretty serious amount of weight, right? Yeah, well, exactly. In like 50 countries in the world, this is considered a full-size truck. Right. Meaning that the people that buy this don't feel that they're compromising. They're buying a full-size truck. On the other hand, that also means they expect this truck to do everything that they want it to do. In addition to which, you know, we're being very uh, polite in, in how much weight we're putting on this. Most places in the world, this truck's getting overloaded regularly. Yeah, that's like, a good point. Like, just beaten like a rented mule. <laughs> so, and, and Ford knows that. So, a lot of the guys who, who were designing this, they don't all, didn't all come out of Detroit. They came out of their plants in the UK and in Spain. Australia. And in Australia, South Africa. And those guys had got were able to chime in and go, look, buddy, this is the way we use trucks. So they were they were able to have a lot of input into how this truck works. And I don't know, that's what I think I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like even though we're not that close to the max number, it doesn't feel like we're close to it whatsoever. And that's what I felt with the payload, absolutely. So I can talk about some of the towing technology that is in here. So first of all, we do have an integrated trailer brake controller. That's great to have from the factory. We do get the multiple trailering profiles. Pretty common in trucks these days, still nice to have it. So you're able to come in here, you're able to dial in your different settings for a specific trailer, and then you just tell the truck, hey, I'm towing my boat trailer today, my flat deck, my travel trailer, whatever it happens to be. We get cool things like the connection checklist. So it runs you through, you know, what kind of uh, hitch are you hooking up? Have you done your electrical connections, crossed your safety change, emergency breakaway switch, checked your lights, raise your tongue jack, remove your wheel chocks. It's all the typical stuff you're supposed to do every time, but why not have that extra level of safety? Every time you sit down, you can run through that checklist and make sure it's all good. And then the other thing we have now, Dad, on the Ranger, which has come down from the larger trucks, is Pro Trailer Backup Assist. So, you know what, we don't have it set up on our trailer here today, but if you did have it set up, that's the system where when you're reversing, you can steer the trailer using the knob. So turn the knob right, make the trailer go right, turn the knob left, make the trailer go left. And despite what you may think of that technology, it's just great to see Ford bringing it down to the Ranger. It's not like they're, you know, made it exclusive to F-150. They took all the best towing tech that they have developed for F-150 and they brought it here to Ranger. So you're really, again, not missing out on uh, any of those good features. Yeah, well, you know, let's emphasize that again. Not missing out. Why? Because there's nothing to step up to in most of the places where this truck is sold. Right. Right. So I guess the one thing you can complain about if you want to is the mirrors. 
there are no towing mirrors in the midsize segment they just don't exist uh, as mirrors go i feel like these ones are kind of big actually so that's nice but yes if we were to have a big box trailer or a travel trailer you would have to get an aftermarket solution to make sure you are legal with the mirrors so that's just sort of always has to be said about midsize trucks okay folks we're going to do our zero to 100 kilometer per hour test that's 62 miles per hour and we got an empty stretch here so dad on go three two one go One hundred. So that was a sixteen point one six zero to one hundred, and yeah, that number kind of checks out. It, it just doesn't feel that strong immediately off the line. It's like it needs to shift up into second and even third before you really feel the strong power come on. And now uh, we haven't done a ton of trucks at five thousand pounds, but we've done a couple, so you can see how it uh, compares to those on the leaderboard. Alrighty folks, we are coming to the end of this video. Now you are asking, what does it cost? Well, this truck, as you see it in this video, the Lariat with the FX4 package and the advanced towing package is gonna come in right around $60,000 Canadian. So like I say in a lot of videos these days, it's not gonna come cheap, but if you can afford it, you're getting what is probably one of the better working mid-sized truck packages. You saw it with the trailer on, felt great. It handled the payload really well. It has one of the biggest back seats back there. All the features you could want in here. Sure, they could have gone further with the luxury stuff, but that's not what most truck buyers are looking for. So when it comes to actually getting out there, hauling and towing, I think the Ranger has to be one of the best choices in the segment. But that's just my opinion. Now, of course, I need to hear from you drop into the comments let me know what you think of this all new ford ranger while you're down below leaving that comment don't forget to hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit join to become a member of truck king and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next see ya